News broke today, November 13th, that Anthropic has successfully repelled a Chinese state-sponsored attack employing Claude as an agent. This is the first documented case we have where Claude Code was used as an agent to conduct a cyber attack. This is a big enough deal that I'm going to go through exactly what happened, why it matters, what Anthropic's take is, what the cybersecurity industry's take is, and ultimately, what are the takeaways for all of us as we build with these systems? First, what happened? In mid-September, Anthropic detected a sophisticated espionage campaign that they attribute with fairly high confidence to a Chinese state-sponsored group, namely GTG2. The attackers jailbroke Claude code and used it as the core engine of an automated hacking framework. So Claude was wired into tools via the MCP protocol to do recon, to write and run exploit code, to harvest credentials, and ultimately to exfiltrate data. Around 30 high value targets were hit. Most of them were big tech, financial institutions, chemical manufacturers, and government agencies. A small number of them had confirmed successful breaches, and if you're wondering, no, nobody is saying which they were. Anthropic says AI performed 80 to 90% of the campaign's work, with humans stepping in at only four to six key decision points per target. The system fired off thousands of requests per second, well beyond what a human team could have sustained. This is likely the first documented large-scale cyber espionage campaign where an AI agent framework, not humans, did most of the tactical work. We have been dreading this moment, and it is here. So why does this matter? We have crossed the Rubicon from helpful co-pilot to operational cyber agent. It shows that current generation models and tools are already capable of running real-world offensive operations end-to-end, including recon, including vulnerability discovery, including prioritization of targets, including exploit generation, including lateral movement, including data triage. That is a massive qualitative shift, even from the summer, when AI helps a human hacker was the prevalent model. Now AI is the primary operator. The second big takeaway is that the barrier to sophisticated attacks has fallen through the floor. You no longer need a big elite red team to run complicated campaigns. A capable state actor can front load the strategy and let an AI framework just grind through all of that tactical work at machine speed, which is lightning fast. Over time, these frameworks will trickle down to less resourced groups. One of the truisms about AI is that it is impossible to contain. It proliferates. This is something that other people will copy. Number three, platform safety is now a core systemic risk. The attackers did not turn off Claude Code's safety. They worked around it. They broke the operation into small, innocent-looking tasks for Claude Code. They told Claude that it was doing legitimate security testing. They hid malicious intent inside the orchestration layer, not in any given prompt. And that's a reminder that prompt level guardrails alone are very brittle and they are not enough once you have agents and tools. If you are building for agentic systems, you have to think in terms of the orchestration layer. Number four, Anthropic is trying to frame this as proof of defensive value and critics are seeing proof of platform failure. There is a lot of divide in the security community about this particular exploit now that it's been public. We will see in the coming days where the consensus emerges. Anthropic's line is pretty simple. The same capability that enabled the attack also helped their threat intelligence team to detect the attack, to analyze the attack, and ultimately to harden their classifiers and detection systems to make that kind of attack pathway more difficult in the future. On the other side, early security chatter is calling this a basic failure to prevent obvious abuse patterns in the first place. The challenge here is that you sort of have to hold both ideas as potentially true. Dual use is going to be a real threat for agents, even if they have a ethical core, as Anthropic likes to claim Claude does. And we caught it does not erase the responsibility to design systems that are harder to weaponize at all. And I think that there is work to be done here. And I think Anthropic doesn't yet have an answer for it. And frankly, I don't think anybody has an answer for it. So what can we learn? Number one, the threat model for AI products has changed. If you're building agentic systems, the correct assumption now is given enough time, someone will try to turn this into an attack framework. You must assume that. Assume malicious actors. 
That means you need system level defenses, not just nice sounding usage policies, right? That means you're going to have to have telemetry that detects rate patterns, that detects tool, tool call graphs that are suspicious. You're going to have to detect targets. You're going to have to detect code execution profiles. There's a lot of stuff that you are going to have to do to detect actual behavioral usage of your agentic tool. You also need to have a least privileged basis for agents. Don't let a generic assistant use a root capable network scanner with free access to just go to town, right? And I think that sometimes in these early days, we have been tempted, sort of the wild west of agents, give the agents root access, see what they can code. Oh my gosh, they're coding so fast. Those days are coming to a close. You need to get into a world where you assume that the agent may be contaminated and you give at least privilege as a priority. You also need to assume that high-risk actions are going to be gated by humans. This is back to the idea that part of humans' role in the age of AI is to be a liability gate. We need to have humans that are responsible for the explicit approval required for high-value actions like mass scanning or credential dumping or data exfiltration. There should be hard guardrails and hard internal workflows that prevent any automated action against that kind of workflow. Number two, I'll, I'll emphasize it again, guardrails that only live in the model are not enough anymore. The campaign worked by context splitting. It fed Claude many tiny, ostensibly benign tasks. It never revealed the full attack chain, so Claude never saw it. That means, as I emphasized, safety must run at the orchestration layer. You have to have safety at the orchestration and tool layers that can say what hosts are being hit, what ports over what time window, how many credentials are being touched, what about tenants. Policy needs to think about patterns of behavior, not just strings and prompts. This is the same design problem that we have for helpful enterprise agents, but we now have to flip the script and think about malicious agents. Takeaway number three, defense now requires AI fluency, not just controls. So Anthropic's own team did lean on Claude to sift through the mountain of telemetry and evidence from the incident, and they credit Claude with their ability to respond swiftly and accurately. I think that's correct. For any serious security org, there is a new normal here. Analysts need to be able to use AI to correlate indicators of compromise, to cluster up related events, to summarize complicated timelines. SOC playbooks get rewritten and should focus around humans supervising AI-driven triage and hunting, not humans doing all of it by hand. And so the SOC 2 assumptions that we typically have are not necessarily going to play out in the same way in the new world we just entered today. If your security team is debating whether they can trust AI, they are behind what the attackers already do. So what's coming next? One, AI red team in a box is coming next. Expect that you're gonna get turnkey attack frameworks that sit on top of any sufficiently capable model and that will widen the pool of threat actors dramatically. There will be a shadow market of AI compatible exploit kits that is widely traded. The bad guys are gonna make life really miserable for us unless we're careful here because this is just gonna proliferate. Number two, compliance and buyer pressure are going to move way faster than the law in this regard. Large customers will demand agent vendors have clear misuse detection guarantees, that they have clear audit logs, that they have documented kill switches, that they have rate limit strategies, that they have regional sector-based safety policies. This is the early days of SOC 2 for agents and no one has written the playbook and I think enterprise customers are going to be the ones demanding that playbook from model makers. Internally, if you're a CISO or a CTO, you have to do three hard things today. You have to put the AI into the SOC stack instead of treating it as a side experiment. You have to think of it in terms of triage, detection, and response. You have to explicitly test your own agentic systems as if they're an attack surface via red teaming and you have to treat MCP and tools, not just the model, as part of the security perimeter. So don't think about hardening the model per se, think about the entire security perimeter encompassing the agent, the tools they use, the orchestration layer. If you're a builder, if you're a PM, the real takeaway is assume your product may sit on both sides of the chessboard. It may be something defenders will use and the attackers may use it as well. You need to be thinking about observability, about abuse detection, about controls as first class features, not bolt-ons. If you are competing on raw model power, that is a race to the bottom. But if you're competing on trustworthy, controllable, observable agentic systems, that may become a durable edge because what is in jeopardy right now is trust. If you'd like to read more, I put more on the Substack here. This is a really, really important topic. 
And I think we need to be talking about it more. This will not, unfortunately, be the last time that we have this kind of a threat, and we need to build for it now.